There is nothing more important to the story of Armored Core 6 than Coral. The red substance shows up everywhere, from the game's title, to the motivations of every character, to each of the game's endings. It's not just an energy source, it's a data conduit and we learn that it is even a living, growing organism. Understanding Coral is essential to understanding AC6, especially since Air, our partner in crime throughout the game, is literal Coral. In this video, I want to explain what Coral is and how it works so well as the anchor to FromSoft's mecha story. I will bring up spoilers, so don't watch if you want to avoid that. And I hope you enjoy. The influence of Coral is everywhere in the game. The fires of Ibis have basically set the game world up, and they were a burning of Coral when it began to grow too fast. Handler Walter wants to burn the Coral again since it has begun growing once more. His whole life is dedicated towards Coral and his goal of burning it all away. Obviously, the corporations are also on Rubicon for the promise of Coral. They want to use it as an energy source and for augmentation of their pilots. The Rubiconians themselves also direct their lives around Coral, using it to raise mealworms for food. Even our own existence as Pilot 621 is dependent on Coral. We are a fourth generation Coral augmented pilot. Because of this Coral connection, we can make contact with Air, one of the main characters of the game, and a literal Coral Wave mutation. This connection is central to the game's final main player, Allmind, who seeks to bring about Coral release in its ending. So we have all these tendrils of Coral throughout the game, but what is it? Well, if we look at Professor Nagai's second log, we can see he calls Coral sheer potential. Ratatoskar has a great video touching on this. Coral represents potential, both literally in-game as an energy source which lets humans do new things, and also metaphorically as it represents the concept of potential in the story. Every character and action, everything all turns on Coral. When one has Coral, one has the potential to do nearly anything, and we see that in the final ending. But first, let's talk more about the literal side. We hear that Coral is a society-changing energy source and data conduit and we learn that it's also some kind of organic hive mind that can self-propagate. It was something poised to improve human society through our exploitation of it, but then it started growing too fast. The Institute got worried about this growth and its possible mutations, what they could mean for humanity. So Ibis was deployed and Rubicon burned. Unlike Nagai, we get to see what happens if we don't burn a coral growth. In the Aliyah Iakta Est ending, we see the results of the coral growing so much and getting so dense that it spawns a black hole, with the help of us and air, some of the only coral and non-coral beings to be in contact. As I said in my ending video, we don't have a clear picture of what happens here, but we also don't need to fully know. The ending's meaning, that the die is cast, is something we move forward with. Nagai and Walter and Thumdolmayan even all feared this unknown. Because they were not sure what it would bring, they couldn't allow themselves to let it happen. Nagai and Walter sought to burn the coral. The coral must be burned, 621. Dolmayan sought to prevent the Rubiconians from going down the path of contact and casting the die. Coral, endure within us all, for none of us shall cast the die. But interestingly, it seems this growth was caused by humans. Obviously, Rubicon has existed as a planet for a long time, but we only hear of the coral growing and needing to be burned after humans began to exploit it. After it was used as an energy source to make Ibis and to create augmented humans. We opened Pandora's box, and Walter makes sure we realize Once something's alive, it doesn't die easy. Walter thinks the solution is that you just have to be really thorough about killing it, i.e. glass the whole star system twice. But I don't think this does the job. I don't think we can go back. The die of coral has already been cast, and we need to deal with it. I think the similarities between Ibis and the Fires of Raven are meant to show that this burning doesn't do the job. Coral doesn't die that easily. Once some new potential is found, how can you go back to the time when it didn't exist? You can't close Pandora's box after everything's escaped. You can't just ignore new potential. I don't think we can kill the coral, I don't think we have the ability to in-game. 
if the Fires of Raven ending just repeats the mistake of Ibis, and if the Liberator of Rubicon ending just pushes the need to deal with the issue down the line, then we are only left with Aaliyah Yak the S, following All Mine's plan. At least until the final fight. Ayer has a key piece of dialogue about All Mine's motivations. She says, Humanity assumed its current form to fight itself, to choose from infinite selections. That is the essence of the human race, and the key to biological evolution. Perhaps it is also a clue to what All Mine's true goal is. The idea here is that what is core to humanity is the choosing amongst infinite selections, infinite potential. We grew and evolved to be the unique species and people we are by fighting ourselves and choosing for ourselves amongst infinite selections. We are beings who bring new possibilities into existence to choose from them to better ourselves. Coral is a complement to this. It brings opportunities to fruition. Coral release is the greatest example of this. It happened when all of Rubicon's coral grouped up together. From Nagai's first log, we know growth happens quicker with density. The massive coral group experienced a positive feedback loop of growing, getting denser, and growing more. And at the apex of this, we and air, as the one point of contact, release the trigger. The coral collapses into a black hole and somehow disseminates among the stars. A gravitational collapse happens, but we don't know if it's also a collapse for humankind like Nagai feared. The coral is everywhere, and we are unsure of what that means. The ending is ambiguous. All we know is there is no going back, and that the potential of coral has been injected across space. Whereas the fires likely fail in their goal to burn all the coral, and Liberator just pushes release down the line, this ending goes through with the inevitable step of evolution. It passes the point of coral inflection. Humanity and our core identity of choosing selections has been given the perfect substance to go forward in that drive. With the coral in some great contact with humanity, we now have the greater potential to seize those infinite choices, to have our humanness amplified to an unknown degree. The die has been cast. And now we must decide if we lament humanity's change as a collapse, or if we move forward in this new world. Despite being everywhere, Coral is ambiguous. This lets it work as a fantastic storytelling device for FromSoft. It is given some properties to set the stage and motivate characters, being an energy source and kind of organic. It also has metaphorical meaning, but it doesn't get caught up in the weeds of lots of technical details. More is left up to the player's imagination, and this lets the player fill in their own blanks and get more invested. This is a common method in storytelling that allows the audience to engage with the story on more personal terms and get more into it. Coral being a stand-in for a broad concept like potential makes it fit to be described with minimal details. Coral lets the world move, and not worrying as much about every aspect of its workings helps to limit players getting caught up on technicalities and small details that don't matter as much. All these features of the Coral help it to tell the story of Rubicon 3, and offer us all these sublime moments that we get with the game's characters. It lets us experience them and their desperately real, human drives. In doing the research for this video, I really fell in love with Coral as part of the story of Rubicon, and as a unique aspect of the final ending. I hope you enjoyed this look at the red substance, and let me know if you want to see more Armored Core. Thanks to my patrons for your support, and thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.